Good morning. Uh, in this video, we're going to look at um, creating images in the style of Rosa Jones. Um, this is in line with um, the concealment starting point on the uh, year 10 uh, current photography project. Um, and we're going to be using Pixlr for it. So I introduced to you the other day the basics of using Pixlr, and that video is available in the Connect resources and also on the, um, the YouTube channel I've set up as part of this. So um, we've got two images here that are by Rosanna, uh, Rosanna Jones. Um, they've been handmade, but um, not all students have access to a printer. And then, of course, at this time working at home, um, it's a bit more difficult to create them. So we're going to be doing them digitally. Uh, so um, over on Pixlr.com, so web link is up here. Um, there are two different kinds of um, using this. So there's an advanced version and there's what they call a playful version. Uh, for this, I'm going to use the advanced version, um, and it's all web-based, so you just need an internet connection and a browser and, um, uh, and of course, your images. So if I click onto that, it will take me into it. Now, I've got some projects here I've been working on um, recently to try and uh, test this out and try and experiment with it. So uh, what we'll do is we'll create a new one, and we'll show you how I make them. Um, so if we go to open image, and then I've got a selection of images that are here ready for demonstration purposes. Uh, so we've got this one, and that one, and that one there. So if I start off by going with uh, Becky 2, open that one up, and you'll see that this more advanced version of Pixlr looks a bit more like Photoshop that you would be used to using in school. So just like before, we have a, t a toolbar on the left-hand side, we have a menu bar along the top here, and then on the right-hand side, we've got other areas as well, such as the layers palette, and we have a history palette there too. So we need to add a second image so we can work with both. So I'm gonna click on the plus in the layers palette and that will give me an option to add either an empty layer, an image layer or a text layer. So I'm gonna go with an image layer and now I'm gonna select a different one, click open and that will lay in straight on top of the other one there, okay? At times today, we're gonna to be needing to zoom in um, and how we do that is we can come over here, we can zoom in using the plus and then to navigate around when we're zoomed in, this red box that's appeared in the navigation palette, we can move that around and that will change where we are in the image. So I'm gonna leave it there for now. Um, and we're gonna use a cut out tool to be able to see through onto the other layer. So over here we have a pair of scissors. This enables us to create cutouts um, and all cutouts that you create in Pixlr are masks. So we've got four different kinds over here and all of them depend upon um, how you're working or how you're happy with working. Today I'm using a mouse for this because I found that that's a bit easier, you've got a bit more control, but it does work with a trackpad as well and it sometimes takes a little bit of practice so it's important to be patient with it. Uh, so the magic cutout from what I've found on Pixlr is a bit too sensitive and you end up with really jaggedy pixely outlines. So I wouldn't advise using that. Um, but we are going to be using the draw cutout um, to create this um, this edit today. So the one we're going to look at is going to create this style first, and then I'll do the um, the other one in a separate video. So we've got this uh, section here, which is kind of sitting on top, and this is a, cu a cut through segment as well. So we're going to work to create those. Uh, so to begin with, we need to make our cutout. So uh, here is our brush. We've got um, the ability to remove from the cutout or add to the cutout. So we're gonna be removing from the cutout today. Um, and in this palette here, if I click on that bit, we can see the different options for the brush. Now um, to change the, the size of the brush is quite self-explanatory and you get a preview of the brush there. So that changes the size of the brush um, that we work with. So you can um, work that. Unfortunately, it's a little less versatile. So in Photoshop, you could use the square bracket keys to make it bigger or smaller, but in this, um, it's not so much. Um, and then the softness tool, this is really important. So um, if I take that right up, you'll see that the edges of the brush get softer. This isn't what we want here. If we go back quickly to the Rosanna Jones example, the edges are very jagged. It's because they've been hand cut. Um, so uh, if we go back here, we need to take our softness right down. So we end up with that really firm, edge to the outline of the brush. We can change the shape of the brush as well. I'm gonna keep it on circular today because I need the edges of the brush to be a little bit more versatile. And then as we go back, you can see this here. It looks a little bit like the quick selection tool that we find in Photoshop. My brush is a bit big, so I'm gonna scale that down um, a wee bit. 
So like that. Um, and then over here, as I click and drag, you'll see that what is left behind um, is is a red element. If we're doing the other one, so we're cutting to add to um, our selection, then that will actually appear as green. Uh, so we can come around there like that. And then we can finish our selection and that will actually cut a segment out for us. So we're seeing through that segment there. And as we see in the Rosanna Jones stuff, it's kind of up and to the left. So we can do that too. So we have a move tool over here. So if I select that, we can move that up and to the left also. So we're seeing that kind of that piece on top. Um, now we've kind of done it this way around, which is fine because actually I can select that cutout tool again. If I click invert, that's going to flip around the selection for me. So actually we've got that piece that's kind of just, just hang in there. And then if I want to tailor how that looks based upon, um, based upon what we want, then I can do, I can go back into the cutout. I can switch modes to, um, in this case, I'm looking to uh, kind of uh, remove from, from the cutout. Um, and we want that draw again. And then we can, oh, wrong way around, add to cutout. We can then um, come in here and kind of add more uh, to where we were. Slight problem is that it's not live. So any changes that you're making are a little less kind of um, in real time, which is, is fine. Quality of images is important. I had to kind of steal these from an old, old album. I don't really do portrait stuff anymore. Um, so I had to steal these from quite an old album. But you're looking to just um, experiment and change your different settings um, to kind of uh, manipulate that as well. These techniques will also be very useful for um, the year 11 GCSE paper at AQA, uh, which is uh, this year's paper, because um, concealment is a topic on there. It's exactly where I got it from for the year 10s. And um, we're looking to just kind of um, kind of change around our segment to kind of um, affect how it's going to work and how we can use it. So back over here, if we wanted to, we could then um, duplicate our layer. So what I did for that is um, in my layers palette, I clicked on these three dots to get that menu, and then we have a duplicate option, so I could duplicate that. It's going to duplicate it with that cutout. So we've got two there, as you can see. And what I could do is um, I could go back in, go to cutout, I could um, add to cutout, and I could put in kind of that portion of, of um, the face all over again. So we can go back to working with an image that we want to. So if we kind of do that. Then you'll see we've got that back. Now let's move that down a bit, just like that. And then we're going to go back to cutout. We're going to remove, use the draw cutout. And then we're going to be a bit, um, a bit drastic to begin with. as you can see there. So one thing that's really important to uh, to kind of remember with this, I, I'm going to use just her hand here. Uh, one thing that's really important to remember with this is um, just like in Photoshop, what you're doing only ever affects the layer you have selected. So here in Pixlr, it's this blue layer here, that's what's selected. And so any changes or edits I make are only going to affect that layer. So select under her hand there. And then we've kind of ended up a bit like that. We could zoom in and tidy that up if we wanted to. So there we go. It, look, it looks a bit weird, but you know these edits are supposed to be a little bit surreal, a little bit strange. Um, if with your image you're um, struggling to uh, to see and to kind of negotiate what it is you're cutting out and what's left and what's what's not left um, then over here in your layers palette you've got this little tick box so you can turn off the visibility so we can kind of turn it off or we can make our background invisible so we can work and isolate just what we want to work with so let me zoom back out again so we can see what we got so it's not looking too bad. Um, I don't actually like that extra bit of hand I did, so I'm just going to hide that for the moment. Um, but this uh, extra bit of face here uh, works really well for what we're trying to do. 
Uh, now, unfortunately, usually here I'd say, oh, let's add a drop shadow. Let's get make that uh, give that a little bit of depth. Um, but that's not possible uh, in Pixlr. You can add drop shadows, but the drop shadow affects the whole layer without its selection. So if I do this just to demonstrate to you a second, the drop shadow um, is in the, the filter menu, and you'll see that the whole of the image is restored again, and then kind of we can do the do the offsetting of the, of, of the drop shadow. And it just kind of is counterproductive, because then when we apply it, it doesn't actually affect the bit that we want to affect. So uh, the drop shadow doesn't work too well for this, but don't worry about that at the moment. This is just about creating experiments and keeping your project moving. If you do have access to a printer, please make sure that you um, are doing printed handmade examples as well at home. I understand not all of you do, um, but at this time that's absolutely fine. Um, so documenting these in your book, make sure that you have a before and an after image, and also make sure that you take a quick screenshot of what you've got. And then you can document that in your book as well and talk about what you've done, how you've done it um, and what the impact of that process has been. Um, I'll do more videos. Uh, so the next video will be Rosanna Jones, where we're going to look at this style of creating the edit is very similar, um, but we will uh, we'll do that in the in the next video. And if you have any questions, as always, ping me an email. Thanks for watching.